Hello, I'm Adam. Welcome to Tech Dive AV Club. We're in Movie Studio 16 Platinum, and we're going to talk about how to put a video inside of a TV, how to put a, a video after the fact inside of a TV. So I just got this random stock photo from Pixabay.com. With Movie Studio, it's going to have to be a straight-on shot like this one. Their TV cannot be at an angle. In Vegas Pro, there is a way to do the TV as an angle, but that is a limitation of Movie Studio. So with that being said, we're going to... Uh, go ahead and get started. First, I need to make sure that my picture, which a lot of times you'll probably already have a video, maybe you've captured the video yourself, but for me, since I have a picture, I need to make sure this picture is not letterboxing at all. So I'm selecting 16 by 9, and I want to reframe it, so I'm going to select it and arrow up until the TV is kind of in a better framing. Now this, I can grab it and move it up. I've already deleted the picture and picture track because I want to teach you how to do it without that. To the event pan crop, and we're going to go to 4x3. We've got the picture in 4x3. Why? Because a TV, an older TV, if you're doing this with a 16x9 TV, don't worry about this step. If you're doing it with an older tube TV, then you probably want it to be 4x3. That's a, This is the aspect ratio of an older tube, uh, tube TV. So we're going to be losing some of the image, but it will then fit the source media that we're going for. So the next step is to grab the picture in picture in fact and drag that on top of this and then now you can actually center it over the TV and just use these little text box editing arrows it's not a text box, use these box editing arrows corners to kind of fill it over the TV. Now you want it to be a touch over the TV because it's easier to believe when it kind of fits the TV. It kind of still tricks your eye that it belongs there. However, we're not done by any means because when you watch it definitely looks somewhat like it's coming from the TV, but we're still we're still got a ways to go on this one. So, uh, let's go ahead and add the cookie cutter effect. So with the cookie cutter effect, you can actually drop it on top of here. And you can see that it actually is cutting the whole picture, which is this picture in picture effect. This only exists right here, but it's cutting a big circle out in parts of it that don't exist. That's because you need to move the cookie cutter in front of the picture in picture. So now we've got a little circle, and that's cool and all. Um, you're going to actually kind of size the circle out to where the corners are cut and you're going to feather it and you're going to have to find a good kind of ratio between your circle and your feathering and where this positioning is so you're going to have to kind of mess with the position of your circle and stuff too to kind of get a good little ratio because you want the corners to kind of bleed off a little bit and that will help your your effect a ton, a ton, a ton. So you can kind of monkey with it until you get it just about right. Now still, there's a little bit of black over top of these corners. We're going to do a little bit to help with that some more. Uh, to fix that perfectly, you need a masking tool, and we don't have that in, we don't have that kind of tool in Vegas. Uh, um, movie studio so you can see the bleed over a little bit. One way to fix that some and also to bring back some of the screen look is to reduce the opacity of this top track here. So if you grab the opacity and you drop it down about 15 percent you'll actually see some of the original screen of the TV and that will have more see some of the reflections come back on it and that helps a ton and so if you're unhappy with some of this bleed over here you can still you can open your effects by hitting this FX button and then selecting picture in picture and you can make this a little bit smaller if you would like and maybe with your cookie cutter getting a different ratio there but look at that we've got an image inside of a TV with the reflections and everything that's so much better looking 
than so much better looking oh yeah look at that so this could be good this could be what you're going for you could be done right now or we can go a step further and let's pretend this is a black and white TV if it's a black and white TV you need to select levels so I'm gonna go ahead and save this All right, so if it's a black and white TV, you need to select levels. And here's why. Because black and white is actually a higher contrast than um, color is. So if you're doing a good black and white effect, you need, to, you need to grab your levels and increase the contrast. And I'll show you how to do that. So first, you need to go to L, levels, here it is, and then drop that on your TV, what's supposed to be inside your TV. You can move that in front of your picture in picture as well. And then you can increase the input start just a little bit, and that darkens your blacks. And then increase your input end a little bit, and that brightens your brights. And so that actually, for our case, that actually kind of messes up the TV effect just a little bit right now on the front end, because it, because it, that duller look actually looked better on the TV. So keep that in mind if you're thinking, man, mine's just too bright. Maybe you should dull it by um, increasing the output start or output end. So one thing we can do that too, we can actually dull it back out just a little bit while keeping the contrast with the output end. Uh, so I am going to dull it back out just a little bit and then see without with. So it's got a higher contrast now and that's perfect for the black and white. So with the black and white effect you just go up to black and white drag this to your TV effect. Now you have a black and white image and this now may be what you're looking for. And if this is, great, you're done. Uh, if it's not, what if you want it to not be as if you were watching it really there? You want it to be as if a camera was actually recording this. If a camera was actually recording this, you would see the interlacing artifacting. So if that's the case, you can go to TV Simulator. And with TV Simulator, you can drag and drop this right here on the top one. And then... Um, this is where you can change a lot of different things about your your TV effect. Now, since we're doing a center TV effect, the only two ones of these you can't touch are the line sync and the vertical sync. And here's why. That's going to be a problem, right? So do not touch line sync or vertical sync. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, keep the detail loom, zoom low, lower the aperture grill a lot, uh, lower the interlacing lines a lot, just make them subtle, um, and then lower the scan phasing a little bit, and then lower the phosphorescence a lot. I think this TV, in my opinion, it needs to have about yay much phosphorescence. Let's see, and with uh, some skin tones there. So phosphorescence is that natural kind of glow that an older TV has. Um, see it, that blue glow? Uh, we're going to just put a smidgen there. A lot goes a long way. And just a touch of static, just a little bit. Intent is not perfect. And there we go. So for some of you, now you're done. This is the exact effect you wanted, and you're done. You're completely done, right? Um, maybe. So, uh, again, like I said, you, c you could have been done earlier. There's nothing wrong with being done earlier. Uh, just depends on how far you want to go. But if you're still just looking for something to give it that little bit of believable edge, what you can actually do is go to light rays. Grab light rays and don't put it on your TV thing. I know you're probably used to doing that at this point, but put it on don't put it on what's supposed to be in your TV, not that media. Put it right here. Put it on the image of the TV or the video of the TV. Now here with light rays, you're going to have to lower the sensitivity, lower the strength, and bound the radius. Now you've got a spotlight effect. You can actually move that spotlight effect to your TV. And then you can increase the feather. And you can increase the X radius and the Y radius. Um, and blend it a little more a lot more actually there and then so now if we look at it without the light rays this whole room is lit but if you look at it with the light rays it looks as if the TV is part of what's lighting the room now one of the problems with this shot is uh, it does you can see the light coming in from 
this angle over here. So the TV shouldn't be, there's no way you could really sell that the TV is the sole source of light. So really, really a lot of blend in this effect is good. But if you want to make it the TV as if the TV is projecting some of the light, definitely a little bit of brightness coming from here onto the floor and front uh, is good. So like I said, the hard light, the key light is coming from this angle right here. So don't interfere with that. Don't try to make that shadow not look there. Uh, but if you, but you can definitely kind of increase, make it feel like brightness is coming out of the TV itself and darkening, uh, uh, giving you a brighter appearance than the rest of the room. So one more quick addendum. I found the spearize effect doesn't always work the way I want it to for this. But for this particular image, it works quite nicely. So it's just another drag and drop. Drag it right there. You have to put it in before the picture in picture. And you just need it very, very subtly. I just have 0 0.02 on it. But I feel like that gives it that extra bubbled glass effect right there. And I also kind of shrunk the corners a little bit of it so that way it wasn't bleeding over as much as originally planned. Uh, I feel like that's given a better effect. So there you go. If any time it starts to bog, go to Draft and Auto. You're going to get a crappy looking version of it, but you're going to be able to see it in real time. And then make sure you look at go to back to best and full before you render. Uh, so it will render at the best possible setting. But this is a TV effect that you can do for movie studio 16 platinum if you're new to editing you can always check out my udemy editing course where uh, i go through three different uh editing projects with you including a narrative edit and a documentary also uh anything you buy through our affiliate links helps out this channel a lot this video is one of the 50 videos in 30 days challenge that i created for myself thank you so much for tuning in for those and we got a lot more videos to come out i'm working on a super secret surprise next